Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for joining us, and I want to say that especially so if this happens to be your very first time to be tuning in and joining our Bible study time. My Bible right now is open in front of me to the book of Ruth, Ruth in chapter 1. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 14. If you are unfamiliar with the story of Ruth, I'll try to bring you up to speed, but I'm going to be jumping into the middle of a very tragic episode here today. But get your Bible out and join me. Get something on which you can take some notes. I'm going to be talking about a particular lady today and what a picture she is, but a tragic picture. So please stay with our Bible study. I want to be encouraging you to get some gospel tracks from us. I've got one in my hand. I've got a free sample packet to give to you. And just in case you missed what my announcer said, for 81 years, this ministry has been giving away millions upon millions upon millions of gospel tracks all over the world in different languages. So I really mean it when I say I want to give you some free gospel tracks. Well, most people are familiar with Jesus' parable about the seed and the soil and the sower. You know the story. But as Jesus explains his parable, he makes two basic points. Number one is this. The seed in the parable it pictures God's word being planted in the hearts of people. But the second thing is the soil, there's four kinds of soil, was a picture of the hearts of those who hear God's word. And as I said, you remember that there were four kinds of soil in Jesus' parable, but only one of these soils produced any fruit. Now, some believers have a real struggle understanding Jesus' parable because they try to make some of the other soils in the parable to be pictures of, also be pictures of genuine believers. But in that parable, only the good soil produced fruit. That's the only soil that actually pictures a genuinely saved person, one who's made a genuine born-again decision. Now, in our story here in the, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, we do not see four young widows. We see two. These two widows are a picture of many that are in Bible-preaching churches today. They are mere emotional followers of Jesus, but they are not real followers. Oh, there are enduring followers. We're going to see that tomorrow, Lord willing. But today, let's focus on people that are just merely emotional followers, those that never got to Bethlehem. Get your Bible. Get something on which you can jot some notes, please. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago, and a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. They're put into a format that's easy to be carried in your shirt pocket, in your purse, in your back pocket. You may have a, a wallet that you can keep a small track in, but that way you have a gospel presentation ready to hand out to a clerk or to somebody that you meet wherever that may be. One of the tracks is this one that we produce. It's entitled, Do You Know For Sure? Do you know for sure? There's a lot of people involved with religious groups and churches and so on. And uh, many of these groups have, uh, they have priests that are part of that and so on. This gospel track is geared for people who are involved in religion especially those where there is a priest involved. And this gospel track lays out what God's plan of salvation is because Jesus said there's only one person that gets, to, gets us to God the Father. And it's not a human being, that sinful human being. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ, the one we just celebrated his birth just here a couple of weeks ago. Oh, friend. 
Here is one of the clearest gospel tracks you will ever find. It not only makes the gospel clear, but it makes clear that a human priest is not going to cut the mustard when it comes to helping you get to heaven. There's only one person that can make a way to heaven for you, and that way is through the shed blood of Calvary's cross where Christ died for you. Do you know for sure? Please let me send it to you. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known our contact information. Give us your name and address. We'll send that packet of tracks to you. You can go to our website, which simply is BibleTracksInc.org. All right. Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 says this, And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law's name is Naomi. But Ruth clave unto her, unto Naomi. And Naomi said, Behold, thy daughter-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. I'm going to stop there uh, for today. Now, my outline title for verses 14 all the way to 18 is this, the response of the girls, the response of the girls. And as I said a moment ago, in case you have not been listening to the earlier broadcast, let me quickly bring you up to speed. A Jewish family left Israel to go live in a Gentile country of Moab. This was out of God's will. They were sinning by doing that. Well, in Moab, the father of the Jewish family dies, leaving Naomi, his wife, a widow. Well, they have two sons. They're adult sons. And they both marry non-Jewish women. And these two sons die. Now we got three widows, and they're starting to head back to get to Israel. Naomi, the mother-in-law, urges the two young widowed daughter-in-laws to go home, to go back to their Moabite families and to find new husbands. That's where we find them as we began to read in verse 14. But due to the advice of Naomi, both girls weep over leaving their mother-in-law. This was not them just being polite, these two gals really love Naomi. Both gals made a decision about what to do at this point. And of course, as we've been saying all along, decisions have consequences. My first point out of these verses talks about the kisser. The kisser. Verse 14 talks about the kisser. One of the girls was named Orpa, And by the way, her name literally means the back of the neck. Her name means the back of the neck, but when it's used of a person, it typically meant referring to that person turning their back away. Well, Orpah lives up to her name. When faced with the potential of hardship and very limited hope, she turns away from following Naomi back to Bethlehem. And verse 14 makes things very, very clear. Listen to what Naomi says about Orpah. Naomi's talking to Ruth, and and Naomi says she, Orpah, has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Oh, verse 14 is clear on this one point. Orpah was emotional about Naomi, and I believe Orpah had a genuine love for Naomi. I do know she did deeds of kindness towards Naomi, but when it came time to decide who to follow, Orpah went back from following Naomi. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, that's where we're going to find Jesus' parable of the seed and the soil and so on. We find there in Matthew 13, verses 20 and 21, we find these words I'm reading now. He that receiveth the seed, that's the word of God, into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and at once with joy receiveth it, yet hath he no not root in himself, but endureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. There's no fruit that's produced. In the little book of 1 John in chapter 2, there are verses there describing the spiritual climate of the times referred to as last times. Verse 19 of 1 John 2 says that some folk who had been part of a good local gospel preaching church left the church. Listen to verse 19. I'm reading again. 
they, the ones that left, they went out from us, but they were not of us. They would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest or revealed that they were not all of us. Now, please listen to me carefully. I want to be kindly blunt to Orpah and the people that she represents. When Orpah grew up, she was an idol worshiper. Why? Because she was a Moabite person. That's what they did there. They had national gods that they worshipped. But when Orpah married into Naomi's family, married one of Naomi's sons, I'm sure she was still an idol worshipper. But in the days and years that she spent in Naomi's home, her heart was strangely warmed towards Jehovah God. Orpah most likely made a profession of faith in Jehovah God and joined that family in celebrating the holy days towards Jehovah God. But you see, to practice Jehovah worship inside Naomi's house was easy and safe. Now, though, there is going to be a price tag for following Jehovah. Orpah has emotions for Jehovah, but her heart soil had no depth to it. The thorns and thistles of being branded a proselyte Moabitess was more than Orpah was willing to endure in going back to Israel. So she abandons Naomi. She abandons Jehovah. She returns to her old family, her old life, and her old gods. She went out from Naomi because she was revealing she was not truly a follower of Naomi's God. Now, remember, remember, my label for Orpah is the kisser, the kisser. She had emotions for Jehovah, but no commitment to Jehovah. How often do we see this even today? Some time ago, an evangelist who is now in glory made this statement as he was preaching. I was in the auditorium and listening to the man preach. He said this. I don't know if it's an exact quote, but it's going to be real close. He said, I believe only about 30% of those sitting in the pews of gospel preaching churches today are genuinely born again. He continued, most of the rest think they are saved, but they are simply are cultural or emotionally attached Christians. They are not genuinely born again. When turmoil comes, these will show their true colors, end quote. Now tell me, friend, are you genuinely saved or are you merely like Orpah? When difficulty comes for being labeled a Christ follower, will you turn the back, go back to your old ways because, well, The world and the old ways is safer, it's easier than being a follower of Christ. Dear friend, Jesus promised that in this world you will have tribulation. My friend, I can't stop that. Even the unsaved have tribulation, but the unsaved don't spend eternity in glory. Tell me, are you genuinely born again? Do you know for sure? If you don't, get this gospel track. You need to make sure of that decision. Who is your God today? Who is your Savior today? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.